American citizens serving in Germany's notorious SS. Fact or fiction? Well, a little bit of both, actually. During the war, the Germans, particularly the SS, recruited very widely and from all of the occupied territories they conquered. They also recruited from amongst their enemies, and it's well known that the SS formed a renegade unit of British called the British Free Corps from among Allied prisoners of war that fell into German hands. But this unit amounted to just 58 men. So what about the Americans? Tens of thousands were captured, particularly during the Ardennes Offensive of the winter of 1944-45, and many Americans have German ancestry. Did the SS succeed in luring some into what came to be called the George Washington Legion? Firstly, let's clear something up. There was never a unit called the George Washington Legion. It's a fiction, perpetrated by excellent thriller writers like Jack Higgins. Not enough Americans volunteered to bother forming a dedicated unit. But Americans most certainly served in German uniform, and some turned sides in the most spectacular fashion. In the United States before the war, there was a fairly large Nazi party organization. A handful of Americans living in Europe when war broke out in 1939 joined the German armed forces. Some had a German parent, which classified them as Volksdeutsche, or ethnic Germans. Others were ideological recruits. Most Americans either went home to enlist, to serve in the US forces, or were interned after Hitler declared war on America in December 1941. Joining the German military after Germany's declaration of war on the United States in early December 1941 was a treasonable offence. One of the most spectacular examples of an American traitor was St. Louis-born pilot Martin James Monty. Born in 1921, Monty's father was a Swiss-Italian who'd emigrated to the United States, while his mother was of German ancestry. Like many men who later joined the SS, Monty was virulently anti-communist. He enlisted in the US Army Air Corps in October 1942, and by early 1944 had qualified as a pilot with the rank of second lieutenant. He was qualified on the P-39 Era Cobra and the P-38 Lightning fighters. Sent to US forces in India, Monty, now a first lieutenant, was attached to the 126th replacement depot at Karachi in modern-day Pakistan. He then did a very strange thing. He went absent without leave, hitched a ride on a C-46 transport to Cairo in Egypt, and from there made his way via Tripoli to the Italian front, peering at the airfield of the 354th Air Service Squadron near Naples. The 354th's task was to prepare aircraft for assignment to frontline squadrons. Monty noticed an F-5E Lightning, which was a photo-reconnaissance version of the P-38, requiring a test flight following repairs. He stole the F-5E and flew the aircraft north into German-occupied Italy and landed at Milan on the 13th of October 1944, where he was taken prisoner. His aircraft was captured perfectly intact and was given to Zirkus Rosarius, a special Luftwaffe unit that tested captured Allied aircraft. As for Monty, he managed to convince his captors that he had defected to the Axis. Such renegades had their uses to the Germans, and many were used to broadcast German propaganda over the radio to Allied forces. In 1944, Monty made a radio test in Berlin, but he wasn't very good. He worked briefly at the Reichsrundfunk Gesellschaft, the German state radio, alongside Axis Sally, another American traitor whose real name was Mildred Gellers. Instead of becoming a radio broadcaster, Monty joined the SS, being inducted as an SS Untersturmführer, or second lieutenant, into the SS Standarte Kurt Eggers, a special propaganda unit of war reporters in uniform that provided correspondence to frontline units. This was dangerous work and many were killed in action. Others worked in the rear areas, writing for the SS newspaper or broadcasting. Monty served alongside another American. This man was a Louisiana-born SS Hauptsturmführer or captain called Peter Delaney, who was believed to have previously served in the French Foreign Legion and may have been instrumental in getting Monty into the unit. In the SS, Monty used his mother's German maiden name, 
Wiethaupt. The unit also contained at least three Britons and one New Zealander, some of whom later served in the British SS unit, the British Free Corps. Monty's job in the SS was to write a leaflet for distribution to Allied POWs, urging them to join the fight against communism. He was serving with the SS Standarte Kurt Eggers in northern Italy when Germany surrendered and went into US captivity, still dressed in his SS officer's uniform on the 10th of May 1945. Punishment followed. Court-martialed in 1946 for desertion and stealing an aircraft, he was sentenced to 15 years imprisonment. But his service in the SS was overlooked. His prison sentence was suspended, and incredibly, Monty was able to re-enlist in the Army Air Forces in February 1947 as a private. By the time of his honourable discharge in January 1948, Monty had been promoted to sergeant. His traitorous past finally caught up with him just minutes after his discharge from the Armed Forces when he was arrested by the FBI. Charged with treasonous acts under the name Martin Wiethaupt, he was indicted on 21 acts of treason. The 17th of January 1949, Monty pleaded guilty. He was sentenced to 25 years and fined $10,000. Paroled from Leavenworth in 1960, Monty lived in obscurity until his death in 2000, age 78. Thanks for watching. Please subscribe and share, and also support my channel at PayPal and Patreon. Details in the description box below.